Thousands of US troops are stationed in England, including Battle Ready Easy Company, getting prepped to be deployed to Normandy, France, during World War II. Now is the time to put all the years of training to work. They spent a considerable amount of time training in the US and Europe to be able to perform significant assignments. Their excitement is cut short as they are told to stand down as the drop zone is not safe due to high winds. Not today. Flashback to two years prior, Easy Company, under the strict supervision of Herbert Sobel, underwent training at Camp Tekoa, Georgia. Sobel would find fault and go out of his way to impose punishments on the soldiers. He seemed to take pleasure in terrorizing his men. The sentences were also not limited to the soldiers as even the officers were not spared. This would not go down well with the soldiers, including the officers like Lt. Richard Winters and Lt. Louis Nixon. At one point, the soldiers, after a 12-mile march, were asked to empty their canteens or water bottles to determine if the bottles remained full. They were instructed not to drink during this brutal training. One soldier was caught with an empty bottle and was asked to repeat the march all by himself. Winters was then asked to select six men, find infractions, and recommend punishments. Winters tried to reason out, but Sobel was relentless. Sobel's hard-heated training style paid off as Easy Company gained the finest performance record in the entire 2nd Battalion. He was commended by Colonel Robert Sink and was tasked to promote Winters as his executive officer. Winters was then asked to make spaghetti for the soldiers as they were supposed to have a lecture in the afternoon. While they were enjoying their meal, Sobel stormed in, informed them that the lecture was cancelled, and asked everyone to run up the very steep Kurahi mountain. As the training went on, Sobel's incompetence as a leader in the field became obvious. He would miscalculate their move or misread the map. The troops under him were concerned and disappointed as their lives were at stake. This caused most of the non-commissioned officers in the company to attempt to resign together. He also caused a dispute with his executive officer, Richard Winters. He asked him to inspect the latrines but changed the time without informing Winters. This led to Winters being unable to perform that task at the exact time as commanded. Sobel thought that Winters would just take the punishment. Instead, Winters requested a tribunal by court-martial. The rest of the Easy Company decided to resign after finding out what happened to Winters. These events led to Sobel reassigning to Chilton Folia to command a jump school for essential non-combat personnel like doctors and chaplains. Back in the present, paratroopers are now cleared to deploy. Winters wishes everyone good luck before they board C-47 in what will become the largest seaborne invasion in history. Easy Company does one final equipment check before jumping off the plane. Still, the routine is interrupted when the Germans start firing at their aircraft. Their commander is killed when the plane suffers a direct hit. This forces them to abandon the aircraft and start jumping off the plane despite being away from their intended landing zone. Easy Company then lands in Normandy but away from their designated drop zone. They are scattered all across the region with limited supplies. First Lieutenant Winters finds himself in the middle of nowhere. Later, Hall, a radio man from a different platoon, lands near him. They then begin exploring the area until they encounter other paratroopers. Winters then find out after checking the map that they are 7 kilometers away from their intended landing target. Winters must now take command. The soldiers have insufficient weapons as their supplies remain unaccounted for. When an opportunity arises to take out some Germans, Sergeant Guarnere wastes no time and annihilates the enemy. The team then continues their journey until they meet soldiers from different companies. Winters looks for Lieutenant Meehan, their commander. He is still unaware that he has been killed. Winters is told that he is in line to be the next commander. Winters Easy Company, composed of just 12 men, is tasked to make the main assault against Krauts near the landing area of US soldiers. Winters executes his strategy with a small group of men and begins the attack. His team faces resistance but can take out a set of German gun emplacements at Brecourt. This allows elements of the 4th Division to safely move men and material inland. Winters' leadership wins the respect of his fellow soldiers as a commander, but the task is not done yet. Winters makes a promise to himself to spend the rest of his life in peace if he makes it out alive. June 8, 1944. Easy Company is now tasked to capture Carrington, France. A challenging assignment to carry out, but US soldiers will have a hard time moving armor inland without them. As the US troops storm the area, they encounter heavy resistance and lose several men. One soldier lost his leg in the process. In contrast, others are badly wounded, including Lip, who is hit in the groin, and Tipper, who is barely recognizable after surviving a blast. Winters is also shot by a bullet ricochet but not fatally wounded. 
Amidst the chaos, rumors start to circulate that Lieutenant Spears killed a group of German prisoners of war. While Private Albert Blythe struggles with shellshock following the battle. Blythe also admits that he fell asleep during their flight and woke up in the middle of nowhere. He also confesses that he did not try to look for the other soldiers but hid due to fear. The troops heavily engage against the Germans during the Battle of Bloody Gulch. The team experiences several casualties until reinforcements on M4 Shermans arrive. This battle gives Blythe the opportunity to find himself. After being spurred into action by Winters, Blythe overcomes his fears. Several days later, volunteers to be the lead scout in a patrol, only to get shot by a German sniper in the neck. Blythe manages to survive but would die two years after. Back at the camp, the troops are having a good time. One soldier is reciting a poem about an actual incident that happened during the battle. An officer makes an important announcement and is told that they need to be deployed again. Due to the casualty and injuries suffered by original members of the troops, replacements joined Easy Company. They are under the supervision of Sergeant Denver Bull Randleman. One of the new replacements is Private James Miller. Like him, the other replacements are also struggling to be accepted by the veterans who fought at Normandy, but they are determined to gain their respect. Miller is confronted by Private Roy Cobb, who sees him wearing a Presidential Distinguished Unit Citation pin despite not serving at Normandy. Bull puts Cobb in his place and reminds him that he did not fight at Normandy himself. Carwood Lipton, Easy Company's new first sergeant, makes an announcement and lets everyone know that they are being deployed again. This time, in Holland. Winters then explains the importance of their mission to carry out Operation Market Garden. Their task is crucial to paving the way for 2nd British Armored Divisions and then helping them in liberating Eindhoven. Nixon adds that all resources are being allocated for this mission and that they will be under British command. They can't afford to mess this up. The team is surprised to see Sobel as they prepare to be deployed. Sobel is now a supply officer. Sergeant Donald Malarkey is not pleased to see him. He was their first commanding officer, and the punishments and humiliation that Malarkey and his comrades had to go through are still fresh. They exchange pleasantries and go on their way. The company then parachutes into the Netherlands as part of Operation Market Garden, where they liberate Eindhoven. They are warmly welcomed by the locals. The team witnesses a public humiliation being done to those who slept with the Germans. Mr. Van Klauk, a member of the Dutch resistance, also adds that those who collaborated with the enemies are being shot. During combat in Noonan, the replacements integrate themselves with the company, but all are forced to retreat. Sergeant Denver Bull Randleman, the replacement's immediate superior, evades German soldiers in Noonan after being cut off from his unit and is forced to wait until the enemy leaves in the morning. He is reunited with the troops, who are thrilled to see him back and alive. Aware that they are in a losing battle, the team decides to find another way to enter Germany. The market garden operation did not go as planned, but the task is not done yet, and they are determined to bounce back. October 1944, Holland. Winters wakes Nixon up as they need to go back to the regiment. They then meet Colonel Doby from British Airborne. They are told that the Brits lost 8,000 men when the market garden operation failed. Their task now is to rescue the troops who are trapped. The operation is called Operation Pegasus. Winters is then tasked to file a report about the market garden operation, including the inventory of materials that the British left. Winters reports the challenge of an unexpected resistance to a German attack. This includes the time Private James Alley was brought into their camp after suffering severe injuries. He also adds the details of the failed encounter when they were outgunned by the Germans. He is interrupted when Nixon comes over to refill his drink. Nixon is a captain now but still refuses to give up drinking. Winters recalls the time when they were thinking that they were already driving out the enemies. They managed to sneak up behind them and started annihilating the German soldiers, only for another company to appear out of nowhere and return fire at them. Winters called in for backup to level the playing field. That allowed the team to regain control until the German soldiers were killed and others captured. Winters lost one soldier during this encounter. Twenty men were also wounded. Winters was offered to handle the 2nd Battalion. He then recommended Moose Haliger to take easy company. Winters can finish his report. He asked Nixon to hand over the information to Colonel Sink. He is then informed that Operation Pegasus is a go. The team will require three trips for their boat to rescue all the trapped British soldiers. The operation is successful, and all the remaining British soldiers are saved. They celebrate the successful process, and the British soldiers express their gratitude for a job well done. Moose is shot by Lieutenant Welsh, thinking he was a German soldier. Despite being badly wounded, Moss manages to make it. 
Winters is given a 48-hour pass to go to Paris. Though hesitant at first, he knows he could use a break. While on a train, he sees a teenager who reminds him of a German soldier that he killed. That incident still haunts him to this day. While watching a film, the troops get interrupted by an announcement. The Germans broke through in Ardennes, Belgium. They are then instructed to report to their respective headquarters. Their passes are also cancelled. The troops are looking for Colonel Strayer, their company commander. Winters is told by Lieutenant Dyke of the situation. Winters tells Dyke that the men don't have winter clothing or enough ammo. Winters then instructed Dyke to secure K rations as they are uncertain that resupply is possible. The troops arrive in Bastonia, a strategic crossroads town. They wanted to ensure the roads would not be utilized by the Germans. Winters informs his officer that they lack ammo, but his plea is ignored. He is then told to defend the area no matter what. Moments later, the troops are taken aback by a sea of soldiers returning from the battlefield. They all seemed exhausted and traumatized. They then learn that the Germans use advanced weaponry and even panthers and tigers. This is not enough for the Easy Company to back down. Through the leadership of Winters, Easy Company moves into the woods near Bastogne despite without artillery or air support. On top of being outgunned, they are also short of ammunition, food, and winter clothing. To see how Easy Company managed to survive the odds, check out part 2.